Right. So there was an earthquake this afternoon up in the Sierras, and it was over in the Walker Lane area, which is over near the town of Walker. And um, it was a very normal earthquake. We do get earthquakes up and down that area. Um, and in that case, it was about a 5.9. Um, and as we would expect, there have been a lot of aftershocks from this earthquake. That's very normal behavior. When we see a big earthquake, there can be earthquakes happening for days afterwards. So we're gonna to touch on that word normal in just a second, but uh, one of the other things about the earthquake was that when we originally got it, it, it was reported as two different earthquakes that we got in from our news feeds, uh, supposedly one over in San Joaquin County, and then the one along the border, and then you know the, the multiple aftershocks afterwards. So just focusing in, when that originally came in, we were talking about two earthquakes, now it's just the one. Well, why would something like that happen? So sometimes our sensors, they get a little confused. We see the waves coming in and sometimes it can get tricky to figure out exactly where that earthquake is happening. That's when people come in and they say, ah, no, look, we can change things a little bit here and see that in fact, that really was just one earthquake. So in this case, there really was just one big earthquake that magnitude 5.9 followed by other earthquakes in that area. But from what we saw, for example, um, the, the earthquake early warning system sent out, I think, two alerts for that earthquake as well. And so we can see sometimes that our system gets a little bit confused, but we can help it out and then come to the conclusion that it is just one earthquake. And on that word normal, uh, you know, a lot of people would look at you and, and a little bit cross-eyed saying, I don't think that was normal. I, I've lived here for a very long time. I don't remember the last time I felt an earthquake moving me around for maybe like a minute or so. That to me, as someone on the street, I say that's abnormal. Why would you use a word like normal to describe that? Well, we have earthquakes that happen all day long and they happen throughout California. Most of them are so tiny that nobody can feel them, but some of them are bigger and we do feel them. And so it's, it's very normal for us to have these earthquakes happening in California. We live in earthquake country. And um, they are great reminders for us to be prepared. We can get our earthquake safety kit. We can make sure that we've downloaded MyShake or another earthquake early warning app. They're great reminders that we do live in earthquake country. These happen all the time. We just might not feel it depending on where you are. And th there's been some speculation in the newsroom talking about um, heat, the heat wave, or, or just the general heat in California in general, and a possible impact on earth on earthquakes. Uh, I don't know if that's something you can speak to, but can heat actually impact an earthquake or at the very least the heat that we're seeing now? We don't typically see a correlation between weather of any kind and the earthquakes. That's, that's not something that we normally see. Yeah. I wish uh, it were that simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess kind of in regard to that, does it expand, expand a, a little bit deeper than that? Just because, you know, if California prone to droughts and all that kind of stuff, if things are drying out, it, does it relate in that way or is it just zero connection? No, like I said, the earthquakes, the, sorry, the earth is always moving. We have these plates that are shifting and moving and creaking past each other. And sometimes they, they slip by quietly and they don't make any noise. And sometimes they make a big rumble. It really just depends on kind of the environment that those earthquakes are happening in. And so again, this is, this is very typical behavior for what we see. I don't think that we've seen any correlation between weather and those uh, earthquakes happening. And I think another question for the layman is, you know, this is the, we threw out the number of 5.9 or a six magnitude earthquake. Um, I'll be blunt, before I got in the news, I didn't I did really have perspective on what that means, at, mm -hmm, uh, just mm -hmm. casually. It's, you could throw any number at me and I'd be shocked. Mm -hmm. uh, how am I supposed to understand as a person who's not involved in earthquakes and just experiences them, uh, how do I comprehend what a 5.9 or a, a magnitude six earthquake is? So I'll agree that our magnitude scale is a little bit tricky to kind of wrap your head around. That's magnitude, that talks about how big the earthquake is, how much energy is released during that earthquake. The thing that might be a little bit more intuitive is intensity, which is how much shaking you feel. And that depends on how close you are to the earthquake, how big the earthquake is. And that can really vary, that can vary for anybody depending on how close you are to the earthquake. Um, so I don't know if I can break it down any, any easier than that for the, the magnitude, but it's basically a scale that tells us how much energy is being released from the earthquake. Um, it's not necessarily intuitive, 
um, for most people, I think. But again, that intensity scale, that can give us a little bit of a better understanding of how much shaking, you know, it ranges from light shaking to strong shaking, which is a little bit easier for us to understand. And that is, is this the prelude to the big one in California? We never know if an earthquake is going to be a foreshock or an aftershock until something bigger comes along or doesn't. Uh, for example, with the Ridgecrest earthquake that happened in 2019, we had magnitude 6.4 earthquake. We thought that that was going to be it and there were going to be aftershocks, but it turns out that that was actually happening just before the magnitude 7.1 earthquake, which was the main shock. But we, again, we don't know that that's going to happen until afterwards. So there's a small chance, about a 10% chance, that there could be a larger earthquake that happens after this one. But most likely, it's, this is going to be the biggest one, and they're going to be contingency aftershocks following this one. All right. And before you head off to grab some dinner, uh, any last comments about the earthquake that you want to mention? Anything we didn't touch on that you still think is important to, uh, to kind of get out there? I think, again, it's a great reminder for us to be prepared. We download any of our earthquake early warning apps, for example, MyShake. I know that the MyShake app sent out an alert for this earthquake. So if you had the app, you may have received a warning hopefully prior to feeling the shaking. Um, but again, it's, it's a great reminder. We do live in earthquake country and we want people to be prepared for those earthquakes.